In the last week alone, some five senior high schools have been hit by fire, destroying dormitories and disrupting academic work in some instances. So far, these schools have been affected. So we're talking about the Bupe Senior High School, the Bupe Girls Senior High School, the Islamic Girls Senior High School in Wa, the Accra Academy that has alone ex experienced two fire outbreaks. Upon Memorial Senior High School in Kokofu in the Ashanti region and Buam Ponsem Senior High School Dunkwa on Ofin. All these happened in the first two months of this year and it's raising concerns about the spate of fires in Ghana schools. Well, in the case of the Accra Academy, one of its dormitories experienced fire outbreaks twice in a space of just two weeks. Education NGO Africa Education Watch says it is concerned about the development and has called for urgent actions to end uh, that. We have the executive director here with us to discuss that shortly. But first, let's take you to Accra Academy, where PSC Nanaya Osafo returned uh, from where he's returning today. That's a week after the second fire. He'll tell us what he found there. And we'll also go to the Ashanti region, a uh, student of the Upon Memorial Senior High School. First, PSC, uh, you're welcome to the show. You, you went to Accra Academy today. Tell us what you saw. Well, uh, indeed, um, after last, you would recall that for many of our listeners and viewers out there, uh, many parents and uh, lots of people were concerned um, about the state of Accra Academy, particularly since it's the second fire in the space of two weeks to have occurred within the same institution. Mm -hmm. um, when we got on ground today, um, so far, it's quite impressive, really. Uh, authorities have played uh, everything quite close to their chest, avoiding the media, but still psyching up the students. At the same time, many of them are going about the academic activities as if nothing um, mm. ever occurred there. Okay. We are told they had psyching sections uh, for the students where they talk to them and telling them to get over this. Also, for students that have been misplaced, not having rooms or having lost one, a property or mm. two, um, they've appealed to them to share rooms with other um, colleagues. So it's a period of self lessness a bit okay. there in the Accra Academy School. Okay, but the authorities, you try to speak to them on camera, but they refuse to They refuse, they refuse, yes. Well, Pierce and I also thought there, he's been interacting with the authorities at the uh, Accra Academy. They refuse to speak to him on record, but like he's saying, there has to be some sharing of rooms and some sharing of beds and some sharing of property uh, or, pers or personal effect, if you like, because of what happened. That is for Accra Academy. In the Ashanti region, students of the Opal Memorial Senior High School who were affected by last Thursday's fire are gradually reporting to school after they were released to go home for some learning materials because they had lost everything in the fire. Headmaster of the school, Grand Prince Charles, fears the return of over 300 affected students who went home uh, may cause congestion in the dormitories. Nana Asensu Mensa has been following up on this for us. He joins me on the line. Hello, Nana. Hey. And uh, what else can you report? Have these students already returned to school? Yeah, I give you out of the almost uh, over 300 students who are affected by the fire, uh, they were released to go home Friday for the weekend and also we, uh, we received some learning materials from their various homes and they returned. But as of today, um, when we got to the campus, uh, almost 51 students have reported school so the uh, school authorities are still expecting all the 300 students to report to school and then so that normal classes will continue mm. so uh, do, were you able to meet with, with any of these students um what, what do they tell you if they spoke to you uh we when we got there most of them were in class it was during instruction hours so we didn't get a chance to speak to the affected students but we spoke to um the headmaster of the school, Goyen Prince Charles, who told us that uh, he fears uh, when all these 300 students report, it's going to uh, uh, create so much congestion, one in the dormitories and also in the classroom. So they've made some contingencies to move some of the students uh, to classrooms, to sleep in the classrooms. Some of them will, will also be joining the other colleagues in the dormitories uh, so that uh, until uh, uh, another, uh, uh, let's say, the contingency plan was also uh, put in place to ensure that the congestion is reduced. And there is an ongoing PTA story building. It's a two-story building ongoing. Uh, it has 
kind of stalled, but they're hoping that uh, building a new dormitory from the scratch will take a long time, which is going to affect teaching and learning. So they hope that the, uh, the, the, the stalled project that was uh, started by the PTA will be continued so that they will move the affected students to stay in the uh, PTA two-story building. You see. So they hope that government will come and then, as a matter of urgency, continue that two-story building so that the students will get a place to mm. stay. And then, because as we stand, if you are going to sleep in the classrooms, they will be at the mercy of bad weather, mosquitoes, and other issues that is going to create more problems. And then also to uh, most of the students to, uh, who lost uh, their learning materials are also trying to uh, re uh, uh, recover. So they said that they are going to come up with uh, psychological therapy for the students to go to. Also, they are also hoping that uh, education directory, that is the Central Regional Education Directory, will come up with some relief items like books and other stuff to help them because m almost all their staff were burnt. And then also, when we are just about to leave the school premises, we realized that um, one uh, unit, jail, unit jail is, um, uh, is a fashion designer. She also came up with some uh, almost 600 school uniforms, and then she donated the school uniforms okay. to the affected students mm. so that at least they will have some screen uniforms to wear when they go to class. So, so some um, donations coming in there, Nana, but precisely what you mentioned is where I wanted to take you to. You mentioned the education directorate there. What response do we have from the education directorate as of now? Come again, give the, the last question. You, you did mention that the education directorate there is expected to, the, the, the school authorities are expecting the university direct, the school directorate there or the education directorate there to step in. I was just about asking you before you said that what they have said or what they have done about the situation. Yeah, um, yesterday um, the education director, that is the, the municipal education director and the regional education director, according to the headmaster this morning, he told me that uh, the education director came the, uh, to the school yesterday and then donated some items to them, uh, some learning and teaching and learning materials. But they are, they are, they are high expectation. They, they, are expect, they are expecting the education director to, as a matter of agency, come to their aid and then continue that stalled project to show that the students get a place to stay. Mm. So that is what they are expecting mm. of them. And then also, um, as I said earlier, the uh, students are coming in gradually. When you got there, they were coming in once and twos. So the school is also urging all parents who are uh, parents of the affected students to also release their, their awards to school because some of the students uh, had a perception that they have to get all the uh, uh, learning materials on t uh, before they come to school. But they are urging them that they should release the students, I mean, the awards, so that they can come to school. Because almost uh, all the teaching and learning materials, which were uh, kind of burnt by the fire, they have some of them because NADMO has come to their aid, the education directors have come to their aid, and other philanthropists and individuals and corporate bodies are also coming to their aid. Okay. So the only, the only basic challenge is the dormitory. That is why they are hoping that government will come in and then finish the dormitory mm. uh, in no time so that the students will get a place to sleep with this. Uh, so, so before I let you go, Donna, just to be clear, the education directorate has not said anything about building or reconstructing this burnt down do uh, dormitory. Uh, you see, we are yet to um, get a response from the education directorate as to what and when they are going to start uh, the, uh, the project to ensure that okay. the housing deficit that the school is faced with comes to an end. Nana, thank you very much for that update. Well, I'll take you away from the Ashanti region now. Well, we're from the Accra, uh, from Greater Accra region. We've been to Ashanti region. Now let's go to the Savannah region because over there, fire of age dormitories at Bwipe Senior High School. Fire officers there have been given reasons uh, accounting for the delay in their response to that emergency call. There will be fire tenders in the custody of Volvo Tamale, and uh, they are working on it. According to them, it's left with one part to be imported from outside the country. They have given us assurance that by next week, we will have our fire tender. Well, I was just wondering how long you keep on dragging between Damago and Bupe to help 
coin fire and the rest. So this, mm -hmm. this will be a temporary measure as we are wait for our fire tender from Bopi uh, to be delivered by Vuvu Company. Aside that, we have also made some alternatives, like engaging the Savasem water tanker, so that we can also face our featherweight pump on it to douse incipient fires whilst we are waiting for the mango fire tender. Talking about Savasem uh, water tanker, was it the one you used to quench, uh, put off the fire at the, the Bupi Senior High, mm -hmm. or was it the, the Damagot fire tender? For the Savasem water tanker came and they were using the buckets of water that wasn't effective. Either to they have already called the Damango fire station fire tender to proceed. Which has to take about two hours to get there. That is so. That is the situation we find ourselves now. The situation is daring now, but it's uh, surmountable in the sense that once the bus company has given the initial 33,000, which have even advanced to the Volvo company to work on the car, it's not a supplementary cost has also been forwarded to Volvo to assist. They represented to me that I should advance that initial money to them whilst they make do with the supplementary funds. And I hope we are calling on them to also bring the said money. I so, appreciate the effort you are putting in place on, despite all the challenges. You are doing very well. Nevertheless, I think if things are put in place, the earlier the better. Looking at the Hamatan season, we will find ourselves. Uh, that is so. The situation we find ourselves is challenging. I may term it as a teaching program associated with the duly created regions, but that notwithstanding, we are doing our maximum best to provide fire cover for the Savannah region. So that's the Savannah region, uh, the person in charge of the Ghana National Fire Service in the Savannah region there. Well, like I said earlier on, uh, NGOs in education have raised concerns about the spate of fire outbreaks in uh, senior high schools. In the studio with me is Executive Director of the Africa of Africa Education Watch uh, NGO, Kofi Asari. I'll start with a statement that uh, they issued. Ms. Asari, you're welcome, by the way. But yeah, I'll start you. with the statement that they issued earlier so we can talk about speak to the issues that are raised in the statement. It says concerns of rampant fire outbreaks in senior high schools. Africa Education Watch notes with concern that in the past two weeks alone, fire has gutted key infrastructure and facility of five senior high schools. The Bupe Senior High School, Islamic Girls, which we mentioned already, Accra Academy, Bubuashi, uh, Opon Memorial, SHS Kukufu, and Buamponsen Senior High School, Dunkwano Finn. The frequency, nature, and outcome of these fires remain a source of concern. Now, they raise four issues there. Let's look at those. It says, all of the fires occurred in dormitories when students were in the classroom, which is when students were out of the dormitory in the classroom learning. That was when all the fires occurred. Uh, the, number two, Aqua Academy Senior High School experienced two fires within the two-week uh, period. Three, the Bwipe Senior High School Girls Dormitory is a newly constructed uh, uh, infrastructure and in all about 1,500 students have been affected and many have been sent home. They say that we recognize that the dry season is usually the peak season for infernos. However, the trendy nature of six fire outbreaks in five dormitories in five senior high schools leave much to be desired, especially when students are preparing for their West Africa Senior High Certificate exams. We note that the Ghana National Fire Service has already commenced its usual investigations in the fires into the fires without preempting the outcome of the investigations. The following actions are urgently recommended to prevent any more fire outbreaks. Uh, the Ghana uh, uh, Education Service should liaise with the 
Ghana National Fire Service and respective district security committees to organize school fire prevention safety outreach uh, exercises in the schools. The Ministry of Education must provide emergency funding towards the provision of temporary uh, residential facilities whilst repair works at the various dormitories commence as soon as possible. And finally, the investigative reports must be made public and should feed into the GES school safety strategies to ensure civil society organizations and the media are able to track the compliance of schools or the GES to the recommendations in those reports. Assurance of a safe school environment is prerequisite for quality te teaching and learning, and it is signed by the man who I have here in the studio. So, Mr. Sari, like I said, I want us to speak to the statement that you put out there today. You indicate in the report that, in the statement that you find it curious, the trend. You seem to have some suspicions. What are they? Well, we, um, we are worried. And um, in our worry, we suspect that our schools are not fire compliant. We suspect that our schools are not compliant per the regulations in the LI 1724 of the Ghana National Fire Service, which okay. mandates every public, every public property or institution that has a property to ensure that the property is fire compliant and has the equipment to deal with fires when they emerge. And so, uh, not just noting this recent six occurrences, but then having visited most of the schools, we know that our schools are not fire compliant. Okay. And so, the minimal fire um, incident mm. would always escalate into what ought not to be the case. Okay. I don't know whether you had conversations with people on the ground and what they tell you, but indeed, it is curious that you mentioned in your statement as well that. All these fires happened at the time when the students were out of the dormitory, when students were in the classroom. You suspect some, some, some um, sort of uh, arson or a planned attack? The, is that part of the suspicions? It is not a suspicion per se, but that is a trend that we observe. We observe that in all the instances, in the case of Islamic girls in Wa, they were in class and then the girls' dormitory caught up, caught mm -hmm. up in flames. Mm -hmm. Accra Academy is saying whether it was day or night, they were either at preps or during you know, normal class yeah. And so it is difficult for you to rule out any possibility. We are not experts in security, we are not the ones undertaking the investigation. Mm. But then we are not leaving any stone okay. on turn in, in finding out what likely. Could have caused these fires. Mm. We also have at the back of our mind the poor security on our campuses. Mm. I mean, we've seen people go to senior high schools and even um, attack students, you know, in, in this country. Last year, we had incidents of people scaling, going to senior high schools, and even in, in some instances committing murder, mm. you know. And so, um, security issues, yes, they are issues of concern and must be raised. If every student is in class mm -hmm. and dormitories keep burning in six schools within 14 days i think that you cannot rule out any uh, the possibility of any um, any any uh, security breach in yeah. in this house but that is not to preempt the investigation of the ghana national, of the ghana national, national fire mission. service we'll hear from the ghana national fire service now let's talk about aqua academy um which the national fire service personnel has been talking about how do you think we can deal with these, you know, fires going forward? I mean, it's here. It's destroyed dormitories, but life must go on. Like you said, the senior high school students are preparing to write the uh, yes. form three. Yeah. yeah, form three students are preparing to write their exams, and this is happening. Yeah. What, what, what then are, are, are you looking at? I mean, have you been in touch with the education ministry or any of these organizations to get this done quickly? The first thing is the issue of attitudes and practices mm. that are likely to cause fires. So you need to change, you need to do some behavior change communication. And the fire service have been doing this, but not in a planned manner. You know, it's normally an ad hoc matter. Mm. Once in three, four years, they'll say we are going to do operation, catch them young. Then they'll go to the, some schools in Cape Coast and then they, you know, it has to be a coordinated program. Okay. It has to be within plan that every year, when new students are admitted, the Ghana National Fire Service, in collaboration with the GES, will organize school-based outreach so that the students will be equipped with the knowledge, attitudes, and, and then also um, 
acquire the behavior that they need to be able to act res responsibly, you mm. know, to prevent um, the occurrence of any fire outbreak. And also, should there be any emergency, they would have known the ABCs of what to do in the absence of the fire. Okay. Apart from that, there are teachers and non-teachers, non-teaching staff in schools who also owe a responsibility um, in that regard. And so this outreach shouldn't target only students, but also workers. We are emphasizing mm -hmm. that if you read the fire service's own pronouncement they've made in respect of secondary schools mm -hmm. and their compliance with LI 9 1724, you will recognize that they themselves, they admit that secondary schools are not fire compliant. I'll come to, to that bit, and uh, uh, so we use that to wrap up, but we've been speaking to the uh, PRO of the Ghana National Fire Service here in Accra about what happened, especially in Accra Academy, and of course, we look at the bigger picture as well. Here's what he's been saying to PSA Nanaya Osafo. Uh, with the first one, we almost finished the investigation. We're trying to analyze the information, the data that we have gathered. Um, the second one, we are still on it, doing investigation. Normally, we don't assign timelines to fire, fire uh, investigations. But it could even take years. Um, normally, it involves a lot of interviews. It involves some excavations, as well as some forensics. That is where we are able to establish whether there's a criminality and then hand over to the police. But I, I must be quick to say that you agree with me that a lot of these schools have been built over the years. And it, it, the onus lies on the schools to do some kind of review in the elect electrical layouts and stuff like that. You know, there should be some kind of review to upgrade because some of the dormitories had even lower intakes, okay, like the number of people who are supposed to be in the past. But now they have increased. And so all installations should be upgraded to meet that level. Okay. We are only lucky that so far in the schools we haven't heard that, you know, uh, there's been any lives taken. But then it can happen. So we need to, as early as possible, look at reviewing the electrical layouts in these schools to ensure that the people in there are safe. There is some kind of lack of um, respect for fire safety consciousness in these areas, you understand me? Um, basically, once the school has human beings, we expect to have early fire detection and warning systems, some fire extinguishers, basic firefighting equipment like uh, extinguishers and stuff. They should have emergency assembly points and all those stuff. Source of water for firefighting. All these places, things must be in the school. And once these schools are burning, 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 then it means that we must really wake up and look out for these things that I've measured, uh, sorry, mentioned to ensure that they have these things in the schools. In the past, we have done some audits of over a thousand premises. I would say that I, you don't need to wait for us to even come. Yes, the owners lies on you to come to us, especially the schools. Invite us any nearest fire station to, to take care of inspections and education and all those stuff to ensure that your your the, not only the student but then the teacher and non-teaching staff must be safe. That's the PRO for the Ghana National Fire Service, Ellis Okolo Vincent there. So you've heard what he has to say, and I think you agree with some of the things that he said. Um, looking at the audits that he says they're doing, would you think that this offers us a platform, an opportunity to begin to look into the fire compliance of most of the schools? But really, can the National Fire Service be able to do this? What do you recommend? Yeah, the challenge for the Ghana National Fire Service is enforcing its own laws on public institutions. And so the difficulty is that they are not able to, for instance, close down schools the way they will close down hotels, because mm -hmm. they are public institutions. But of but, course, in the schools, we have our students there I who understand. are, yes, but who there, need there, to be protected. There's vacation periods where these things can be done. What, what, I'm, what I want to say is that they shouldn't wait for the schools to come to them, as he suggested. Mm -hmm. They have to go to the schools and then ensure that the schools are conforming to the standards, you understand? Mm -hmm. The institutional collaboration should be at the highest level 
okay, maybe at the ministerial level, to ensure that all our about 700 plus senior high schools have extinguishers and the basics to fight primary fire outbreaks so that they don't escalate to the level where we will even need a standard intervention. While the fire service will be doing their normal outreach in the schools um, to ensure that practices... Uh, but my final question though is that usually when we say this, we say government should do this, the ministerial level should do that, but we know how things work. It's an organization, you know, that's concerned with education like NGOs in education willing to, for example, engage the ministry or engage the stakeholders as far as this is concerned to get it done. Yeah, our point of entry, which is a different approach to the usual, is that we are going to make a request for the reports of all these fires you know in the next two to three weeks okay. now the fire service is saying that it mandates does not prescribe that it gives investigative reports out now we are also telling the fire service that it mandates equally does not restrict it from making those public and so we are going to activate our rights under the right information law and then demand access to these reports okay. in the recommendations we will find work for ourselves CSOs in the media we are going to follow up on all the schools and ensure that every recommendation that was made in these reports are implemented to the letter by the genius to ensure that our schools are safe or are safer for um, our students. Yeah. Mr. Sari, thank you very much for coming and passing through the studio. Kofi Asari there, he is uh, head of the Africa Education Watch um, NGO in education talking about the fire outbreaks in our various institutions well if you are in any of these schools be compliant and make sure that your school is fire compliant as well and that you yourself you keep the school safe you're still watching the polls with me Gifty and Do Apia.